All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Welcome to episode 215 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I am your host today, Lonnie Weissar, STL KISS on the KISS FAQ Message Board. And I'm joined today by Mark, Marcus Almighty. Hello. And Ken, 69th Blizzard on the board. Hey. So as you can see, or as you can hear from my introduction, Julian is not with us today. He had a prior commitment, so I do apologize to the listening and viewing audience that not only do you get a show without Julian, but on top of that, you're stuck with me hosting the show. (laughs) But that doesn't mean we can't have fun because there's a lot to discuss and there's a lot going on in the KISS world right now as we gear up for the end of the road tour, which starts um, just over two months from today. Um, Sunday, KISS put out a little video getting us excited, saying there was gonna be some news on Monday. There were some speculations what it would be. Mm-hmm. Would it be more dates? Would it be, were we finally going to you know, talk about who's going to open for them? But it was, obviously it was new dates, 25 more dates in the United States, which brings the and Canada. total, and Canada, thank you, sorry, Mark, my apologies. And which brings the total number of dates for 2019 to 103 dates, which is a which is staggering, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, when when they announced they announced the U.S. leg, and then they announced the I'm sorry, the North American leg, and then they announced the European dates, and there was like a four month gap between the European dates and the Australian dates, and I kind of thought, well, maybe they'll add some more dates in the, in North America in that time frame, or. You know, maybe they'll just take that time to recharge their batteries because that's already a lot of dates for 2019. Maybe they'll just take some time and and then continue on. Because we've seen KISS tours like that in the past where they've, they've done a lot of dates in a row and then take a couple months off and then gear up and go again and then take a couple months off. And that kind of made sense to me that, well, maybe we'll just take a few months off. And if it is going to be a three-year tour, we're not going to – you know, maybe you know, there's going to be some months off at that point, but there's not going to be as much time off in between with these additional days. So, um, first off, did you guys buy any pre-sale dates this week, or are you going to buy some of these new dates? Uh, no, I'm still waiting on my original plan. Um, oh yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it like that. I mean, even though the funny thing was one of the extra dates added was a Toronto date, which I thought was kind of ironic that they did add another Toronto show. Uh, but then, of course, you know, we're one of the best audiences that KISS plays to, so of course they're going to add another Toronto show, right? So, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still going to wait, and uh, I, I'm pretty confident, though, now now more than ever that I'll be able to see them, if not once, then twice, for sure, so. Yeah, so, yeah, when I saw it, and I saw they put uh, Oakland on there, I'm like, man, why didn't you do that on the first <laughs> the first <laughs> tickets out? So it goes, you know, it's Oakland's closer than uh, Sacramento, which are I had already bought tickets for, um, but yeah, Sacramento's not too far. I mean, it's a little bit over an hour, so. Uh, but uh, yeah, I saw that and I'm like, okay, I got to do it. And you know what? The my Sacramento seats weren't that closest anyway. They were kind of actually. I, I I didn't even put myself on the floor on that one. I put myself off the, on the side, mm-hmm. just so, you know, like in front, off to the side angle there uh, seats. But uh, uh, so I was kind of like, okay, this time I'm going for it. You know, it's Oakland, it's close, and this is going to be the la- if this is going to be the last thing for me, I'm going to go ahead and go for it. So I I, I got front front row seats. Wow! Look at you! Wow! Front row, almost, almost center, almost, but front row seats. And uh, what's funny about that? I'll tell you real quick. I, I said uh, on Facebook, I think I said I got front row seats in Oakland, and then Julian says, "Me too." So you got front <laughs> row. So, so then later I said, "I said, well, we're probably not too far away from each other." 
and so he he told me his his seat number, and I and uh, I won't say what it is, but and I said <laughs> okay, uh, hmm, what, I can't remember what seat number. So I went back and looked at my confirmation email, and it's right next to. <laughs> It's right next, next to each other. So we're sitting next to each other. That's at fantastic. The show. I was like, that, that, I don't know, it was, I guess, some kind of kiss Magical fate. Magical karma. Some mystical power. It's a kiss fate. Yeah, mystical power. <laughs> we, we had our talisman uh, with yeah. us at the time. So, yeah, that, that was cool. And the other thing I'll just say quick is that I know it's going to be interesting called Julian's going to the first show. North American or whatever, and he's going to be going to the last show because the Oakland is the last. It is. Uh, so that's going to be he could he could really do a comparison first to the last. What yeah. changed, Julian? You know, so. That could but be uh, interesting. And, and I got to ask, being that you went ahead and, you know, went full full I force think. and got the uh, the front <laughs> tickets, front row tickets. There, um, is it going to be Kraft macaroni and cheese for the rest of the month because of that, or? Yeah, well, you had to, in order to get that front row seat, you had to get the, one of the meet and greets, you know, not the, oh. not the most, oh, expe did, did not the you, most oh, expensive boy. one. Uh, and so I kind of said on a earlier podcast that if they came back, I'd probably do a meet and greet on the last one anyway. Uh, so I, I went ahead and, and did it, you know, it's front row anyway. Um, and, you know, whatever. Do you're, the putting, you're putting your liver on eBay? We're going, yeah, I'll be putting that <laughs> kidney in. <laughs> so, yeah, I, you know, I figure it's the last time. Well, uh, I'm just going to just go. Go all out. Yeah. Go That's on. cool. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I bought tickets for St. Louis um, yesterday morning. I They announced the dates on Monday, and my brother works at a – at a big company here in St. Louis whose company always has um, a company box at all the shows at the at the outdoor shed. And this summer we saw Marilyn Manson and and Rob Zombie from from his uh, from his bit from his club from his place of businesses uh, club seats. And they're front they're like like literally looking right at the stage, like on the same level as the stage. You know what I mean? You're not down low, you're like looking like eye to eye with the performer. Um, but the problem with that is, is you never find out until morning of the show mm -hmm. if you get it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. while my brother has a, a good job there and he's been there for a long time, it doesn't mean that a vice president can't come in and, and oh, say, yeah. oh, I want to take my family. And mm -hmm. the same, and this, that's exactly what happened when Kiss came with Def, Le Def Leppard in 2014. He called me at 11 o'clock and says, um, I didn't get him. I'm like hitting the panic button at that point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting good tickets to that show because a lot of times, a lot of times, and it's a gamble, but a lot of times if you wait until the day of, you know, they release some tickets that were either set aside for gold or platinum packages or for meet and greets and things of that nature. And we lost that out. didn't get picked up either. Right or yeah, and we lucked out, and we got good tickets for that. Show. We got good tickets um, that that day. We were just by luck, but with it being that far away, with it being November and the show not being until September first, like, well, that's a long time to sell tickets, and that's a long time for one of Todd's bosses to say, "Hey, I think I might want to take my family to the Kiss show, or my son wants to go to the Kiss show." Or for us just to get blocked out. So I was like, that, and originally I was like, no, you know, we'll get tickets. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. But that morning, as the pre sale is getting ready to start, I'm like, that's a chance I'm not willing to take. Yeah. And plus, like, if and even if you get the, even if you for some reason get the box, you could always just scalp your tickets and get extra money. Correct. So he said that. So it's exactly what I did. I texted my wife. I said, hey, um, I'm gonna go ahead and buy tickets this morning. She's like, whatever. You know, I go, this is it though. I go, yeah, I, go, I swear whatever. it's the last time. I swear it's the last time. She's yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, they're not they're not gonna come back again for the fiftieth anniversary. I'm like, no, no, this is really it this time. Like, yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. So I went ahead and I, I pulled the trigger and I I am not on that front row, but I'm I'm down low at the at the outdoor venue. We have we have pretty good seats for the you know, I'm I'm not gonna say pretty good seats for the money because they are expensive. <laughs> but you know, um 
So, but it, but it was weird though buying it, buying buying those tickets that morning because one, it was a a lot of money that I that I dropped on Kiss tickets when I just dropped a lot of money on Kiss tickets, um, maybe about a month ago yeah. to go to Memphis because there wasn't a St. Louis date. So, you know, it, it was I had mixed emotions about doing it. One, I was like, oh, am I doing the right thing? This is a lot of money I'm dropping again when I just dropped a lot of money again. And then afterwards, I was like, okay, well, you know what? This is it, though. I was like, you know, that that might be the that might be the last time I I purchase a set of Kiss tickets. And you know, I've sat I've sat at the same computer where I sit right now, and have bought I've, I've worked at the same company for for eighteen years, and I've bought a lot of Kiss tickets <laughs> sitting at my desk <laughs> at work. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's okay. The boss doesn't listen to the show. But I bought a lot of kiss tickets sitting at my desk over the years. You know what I mean? And it's like, well, that might be the last time I do that. So maybe it, you know, um, I'll feel differently. I'll, you know, so that, that those kind of emotions went through my head, and I'm sure a different set of emotions will run through will run through me when I see them for the last time as well. But it was kind of a bookend. That was the last time I'm I'm probably gonna buy tickets. But I. I was really happy that they announced the, the next leg of the tour and that I'm going to get to see him one last time with my wife and I'm going to get to see him one last time with my brother, who is the guy who introduced him to me when I was a kid. He took me to my first Kiss show in 96 on the reunion tour and we've been to multiple, multiple, multiple shows together and that I get to experience it one last time with my wife and I get to experience it one last time with him it means a lot to me. So, yeah. Ken, what, how did you feel buying those sets of tickets other than having to explain yourself a little bit afterwards. Well, I mean, cause <laughs> when I, yeah, when I did the Sacramento show, I, I was like, ah, eh, you know, it would have been nice to be closer for my last show, you know, thinking that that was going to be it. Um, but you know, the Oakland thing came up. I'm like, Oh, you know, this kind of like, I'm glad I didn't go front row at the other one. Uh, right. I went to front row this one, and actually, the other one when I was trying to get tickets, Ticketmaster was like went down and it was giving me all kinds of problems on the Sacramento one, but this one went really smooth, and I just went in there, <laughs> clicked that, you know, front row, <laughs> popped up. Okay, we're securing our tickets, so it was right away. So it felt to me like, uh, you know, that yeah, this is a good ending. I mean, it's going to be my last show to be right there in the front, to have mm -hmm. a meet and greet with them. You know, this is this this is probably going to be it. Because um, I don't know if they're, I, I mean, I, they, they may do cruises still down the road, more, you know, some years, but I don't know if I'll even make one of those, because that's even more expensive than right. just going to the show here. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it, I think it was a good thing that I, I don't know. I'm happy. I'm happy. It'll be interesting how I feel after I walk out of that, you know, concert. Right. Well, it is interesting though that if they are going to do three years of touring, you don't think they'll do a third U.S. leg? Well, <laughs> you, you know. Well, let me just say, yeah, as they say, three years. I don't. I don't think it's going to go through years, but yeah, if they did another leg, because they're saying, oh, we're going to play all the places we played before, one, you know, once kind of thing. It's like, well, does that mean they'll come back another leg and hit the Cow Palace in San Francisco? Right. I don't think that, I can't see that happening, but you know, you never know. Yeah. Um, that's that's kind of how I felt too. It's like, well, if they come back and they do another North American leg, I can see them doing a a lost cities like that. type of um, tour, like they kind of like mm -hmm. what they did in 2016 also and hit a lot of these B markets that they're not hitting. Cause most of these cities, if you look at the North American legs, they're all for, for, mo for the most part, there's major, major cities. You know, there, there is an Omaha in there. There's a little rock Arkansas show in there. Um, yeah. But they're not hitting a lot of the secondary markets like they hit in 2016 or like they hit going back even to like 97 when they did that spring tour 97 on the reunion tour. Right. There isn't like a Peoria, Illinois and, and like a Springfield, Missouri and smaller markets like that, that right. they hit. So I could see them coming back and, and doing a leg like that. 
not only hitting those markets, but then, you know, getting the diehards to, to go on, you know, road trips to go see them in the, in these smaller markets. But for me, I'm not, I'm, I'm doing my one road trip. I'm going to go to Memphis and see them. Um, I don't know if I need to do a road trip if they, if they come back and do another leg. I, like I said, I got my wish that I get to see him one last time with my wife and I get to see him one last time with my brother. And I honestly, St. Louis is, you know, we're not, we're not Chicago. We're not Dallas. We're not Houston. I don't see them saying, Oh, you know, we got to get another St. Louis date in there when we, when we tour back through the States, you know, yeah. I, I don't, I don't see him coming back, coming back to my hometown after this. So um, I, I feel confident that, if this is it, which I think we all really do 18 years later after the first farewell tour that with Gene Push in 70 and, and, mm-hmm. and, and Paul not too far behind him, that this just can't logistically just keep going and being a, a, a touring band mm-hmm. more than the next couple of years. Yeah. So anyway, we, we look forward to the end of the road tour and, and debating about about set list after the first show and, right. and talking about stage and talking about I don't know voiceover tracks or anything else that we may wish to discuss after those first couple of shows and Julian will be the Julian will be our on the scene reporter since he's going to be there for the first show so we'll get a we'll get a live taste right away on yeah. on our show. Um, other things in the Kiss world that have been going on are we're starting to monetize a few more items that we may have not monetized in the past. And some of the prices for these are, are a little eye opening. Now you can buy, the G- and now you can buy the Gene Simmons torch for which he breathes fire out, for which he spits fire at the city that you're at. And Gene will sign the torch you get your. You can actually get your picture taken with Gene as he signs the torch. He'll write on the torch, I guess, wherever you want, for the low, low price of twelve thousand five hundred dollars. <laughs> what a ripoff! So my whole thing is, is that okay? You buy the torch for twelve thousand five hundred dollars. You choose not to put it in your kid's college fund. You choose not to put that. You know you know, buy those new appliances or put the new floor down in the kitchen or, or whatever else you have going on in your life at the time. But for $12,500, you get this thing. Well, then you got to put it in some kind of display case or some kind of frame too, right? You just can't totally. put it in a box in the basement and forget about it. You, pe- you spent twelve grand on it. So you got to display it proudly in your kiss shrine. But my wife brought this up and it's kind of interesting. You get to bring people over and say, oh, well, check this out. People are going to look at that who aren't Ken or Mark or Julian or myself or whoever and go, well, what is that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and then and not only that, piece. but after, after that, when they, when you tell them what that is and then you tell them how much you paid for it, they're going to be like checking you to see if you're running a fever or something. Really? That's for sure. And really you're serving hot dogs and hamburgers for dinner the night. You couldn't give me a steak. really. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I mean that's why. <laughs> but I mean, I don't understand. Like, okay, like some things I can understand maybe being a bit pricey. Like, you know, even the guitar, and we'll get to that in a minute, yeah. I'm sure too, is a pretty pricey item. But at least you know you can play that. You know, when we when you display it, you know, you, you can you can still you can still you know explain it to people why you got it. This thing. Like Lonnie said, how are you going to explain that you got to yourself this torch, you know, and people are going to say, why? Why did you Why did you buy that? Like, you know. He wanted to go into <laughs> breathing fire. Into flame you know? throwing? Like, I wanted to get some, into the fire breathing business. I'm going to start the barbecue with, with this thing. <laughs> you know? Check it out. <laughs> Check it out. The- <laughs> Yeah, we're having hamburgers and hot dogs, but yeah, we're having hamburgers and hot dogs. But you should see the way I'm going to light the grill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jeez. Well, it's only one of those per show, obviously available for the for the torch, uh, because they only use the one. I think. Do you really? Was, come on, they're not. Are, you, uh, are they going to sell 103 of these at each show? I mean, no, there's no. 103 It'll shows. Be good lucky show. to sell one, I think. At, right. at a show, Who's going to? Yeah. So. But you know what? Someone will, and if that's what. It, it, we do live in a capitalistic capitalistic society, and if somebody wants to sell it and somebody wants to buy it, 
I guess more power to them if someone's willing Absolutely. to buy what you're going to sell. But at the, you know, people can get upset about people can get upset about. Well, you know why are you know why are they doing this? Blah blah blah. blah. You know, well, it takes somebody to buy it too. Just because somebody puts something on sale doesn't mean someone's going to buy it. They don't have to. Someone will do it. Someone will do it. Yeah. Just like someone paid thirty, you know, a couple of people paid thirty grand for Gene to come into their house to well, present yeah. them with a vault. Yeah, you know, but the, the one, but that's the thing that I don't don't understand though is that we we on this podcast have done many many episodes where we talked about different ideas of stuff for the band to put out for us to co- go and buy, you know, and you know, they could have easily have done any one of those ideas that we had and brought it along on tour to sell. Mm-hmm. But no, they're going to bring out an item that's so out of people's price range that that's what doesn't that doesn't make sense to me. I mean, you know, Ken and I have, and you too, Lonnie, we have all talked about making you know box sets and this and that, and lots of bands do that now. They make these deluxe box sets that they bring out on tour, and lots of people buy them because you know there maybe be like 150 bucks or 175 bucks, and that's within people's range of money. What twelve thousand dollars? Who's going to come to to a show and say, yeah, I got that right here in my wallet? You know. Well, you have to you have to purchase a, a still purchase a ticket. Even yeah, you're, you're still gonna buy your ticket. Like, the twelve thousand five hundred dollars does not get you into the show, <laughs> though. You think it would, right? But you still man, have to buy that thousand dollar ticket, like ten bucks. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. But I'm not. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's way too much. And the guitar, right? That one. Even more. Right. So yeah, so so now we use that. There's there's the, there's obviously there's the microphone for four thousand yeah. dollars. There's different guitars ranging from from fifty five hundred dollars to eight thousand five hundred to eighteen thousand five hundred dollars. Something like gold that, yeah. some crazy amount. And he's going to use. I guess if they purchase a guitar, he'll use that guitar at every so ten people. <laughs> I want to say ten people ordered these guitars different guitars, he's going to have to have them backstage ready to go to play on each, on some song. So it's mm-hmm. played at least once, and then they can give it to them, sign it after the show. <laughs> Crazy. $18,500 for, for, this, for this gold-plated cracked mirror top-of-the-line one, it's I guess. nice. I mean, I wonder how much it really costs to make that guitar. Not anywhere near that, let no. me tell you. I mean, having gone to numerous uh, factories that have done guitars, if you wouldn't, if you would actually hear how much it costs to make these guitars, it's... you would be like, think it's an absolute insult of how much they're charging for this. Yeah. So. So, and then on top of it, if you want, that doesn't include the the guitar strap. If you want the guitar strap that was on Paul Stanley's <laughs> shoulder, it's an oh, additional twenty five hundred dollars. Oh wow. <laughs> But they, they re- these guys must be either really like trying to get money for their pension to make sure that this is the final tour the so that they never have to go out and tour again. So because, I mean, want, come on. So if you want the guitar and the strap, it's $21,000. <laughs> but, but... It doesn't come with strings. you got to buy those, too. What, you know what else it doesn't come with? What? A ticket to the show. <laughs> yeah, a ticket to the show. <laughs> Even come with you pick. still have to buy your ticket to the show, um, which at that point yeah. is chicken shit money. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. It's just, <laughs> uh, you know, man, I hope well, they're giving some of, of it to, like on. half the price to charity or something. I mean, I, I love, to, <laughs> love to hear. Yeah, this is Kiss we're talking about, Ken. This well, is a Kiss yeah. podcast. Yeah, <laughs> is that possible? <laughs> So with these new items, with with you know, and then you know, Tommy has his packages for guitars. Eric has his package for packages for yeah. for drum heads mm-hmm. and and things of that nature that you can buy off off of his kit each night too, if you so desire. What else at this point? What else is there that Kiss could that Kiss could sell you? I mean, they're close. If, if that's not a rhetorical question, I don't know what is. It? What oh, else yeah, could they're, Kiss they're sell costumes. You, uh, you know, yeah. can you can you buy? Can you buy a boot from Paul Stanley from the night he played in Memphis? You know, Paul Stanley's right boot. You know, and it makes you wonder, though, if they, if they do stuff like that, could you imagine how much space they're going to need on this tour for all these extra things? Like, if they're going to start bringing 
numerous guitars and stuff like that. They're going to need like another half a semi tractor trailer just to bring all this stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, You know, it can, at the end of the tour, are they going to, are they going to chop up the stage and and you can buy pieces of the stage at the end of the, at the end of the tour? Or get the K. Or the little uh, wig, wig hairs, you know, you can buy. A bulb out of. Wig or Gene Simmons wig. A bulb out of the eye on the Kiss logo. You can they'll unscrew Ooh, the bulb yeah. and you can buy one of the one of the light bulbs from the logo. Assuming that they're going to use that kind. Assuming of Assuming that they use the real hook. I hope you know. I hope they do use uh, like the classic. Well, if we ever get to see what the stage looks like. That's yeah. That's the other thing. Yeah, wait two months for that. <laughs> You're gonna have to wait two months for that. The way. So what else is there? I mean, like when they tore down. Bush Stadium here in St. Louis. They tore down old Bush Stadium. The Cardinals really monetized anything they possibly could. And people here around here were, were clamoring about that. Oh, it's ridiculous. I mean, they were selling urinals from from the men's bathrooms. You could you could buy a urinal from old Bush Stadium. And I'm sure they've done I'm sure other stadiums have done the same thing as well. Yeah. You know, at the yeah. same time, my brother's like, How cool would it be if I had a urinal in my basement from the old Bush Stadium? That'd be so freaking awesome. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But yeah, my sister's, bo- my sister's. Yeah, who who has used that? Yeah. <laughs> well, my sister's boyfriend actually, uh, when Maple Leaf Gardens shut down, they auctioned off a bunch of stuff, and down in his basement, he has like two seats from the actual Maple Leaf Gardens. There, I think it's the red section seats they have. He has there, and uh, I remember when I went there and I saw them. I sat in those seats, and man, I, I had a, such a flashback from sitting in those seats because they are so uncomfortable, those damn seats. And I remember seeing so many Rush concerts on those seats in Maple Leaf Gardens. Wait, you mean you weren't standing for the whole Rush show? Well, (laughs) you're not a real fan. Come on. Of course I was. (laughs) Of course he was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like like my dad has two seats from Old Bush Stadium in in his backyard that he has like, that he has mounted on, on, on these, I don't know, whatever that they gave him seat. You know, he has them. You can sit him. He can. You can sit him on on his deck in his backyard, and that's cool. I don't mind stuff like that. But yeah. like the Cardinals, they get really got down to the the nitty gritty. You know, we'll say it. You know, pieces of rubble or and just just anything that they can make any kind of money. Yeah, well, they did that. And and, it, and thinking about that remind it reminded me of Kiss when I was thinking about what else could the Cardinals possibly, well, Cardinals, what else could Kiss possibly monetize to to gain just a little bit more money out of you one last time around. Well. I, you know, I wasn't thinking about the show, but what I thought about, you know, when they said monetizing something they haven't made. Uh, I, you know, they have done some games in the past. You know, I actually have that original game, that Kiss on Tour game. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I have that, um, actually. I got it back then in the late 70s, but uh, and they got, you know, the Kissopoly, Monopoly kind of thing. Yeah, uh, I got but that. I thought, you know, yeah. I started thinking about games, and I thought, what about... A, a kiss end of the road uh, game, which is what it would be is, it would be like uh, it would mimic uh, the game of life. That one, mm. where you start out, it's kind of like you're starting out in your career. So the first, you know, you each you go on each step, and the first steps are like learning guitar, and you hit something, and you have to go back to something else, or you know getting a manager, doing all this stuff, and then, you know, forming a band. And then you get these guys, maybe the little thing that you move around is a little stage. And you move these little pegs, as the pegs, your, your other guys that you that join you uh, in the band. That's That sort of stuff, you know. And then, you get, then cards and stuff, and you spin. I, I just thought, well, you know what, they could do it. Just change that game of life around and just turn it into a kiss end of the road kind of uh, game. Yeah. So they start yeah, out I mean, their early career and they all the, you know, the point is to get to the end of the road at the end of their road, you know, of Kiss. Uh, so, yeah, and I thought that eh, might work. <laughs> I don't know. I thought they could monetize anything, you know, if they really wanted to. Yeah. So did we lose... Uh, Lonnie, because I can't even hear him now. Oh. No, I'm back. Oh, he's back. Sorry about that. There he is. Sorry about that. He didn't like my. He didn't like my. Uh, I didn't like your board game idea. My board so game idea. So he just I, stormed I, I, off. I didn't, I didn't even want to listen. I didn't stormed off and went outside his door and screamed. 
and came back. <laughs> and Alan <Alan-Ona. laughs> So I don't know. I, I I think they will. I think they'll surprise us with if if you think this is it for what they're going to try to monetize on this tour. I I think you're mistaken. I I think they're they're going to try to to get you in any way you can. Like like Julian was talking when he went on the cruise that he felt like people who went on the cruise who didn't do the extras like whether it be the Paul Stanley experience with the guitar or the Gene Simmons thing. And he said there wasn't a whole lot of kiss unless you paid more money for these experience on top of what you already paid for just to get on board the ship. So it, it's kind of, it kind of feels like what the end of the road tour is becoming is just, well, you can, you can get a ticket to get inside the arena, but if you really want the kids experience, well then you really got to show up the cash for these, for these extras. What, I mean, what happened to them giving the something away for free? Like, you know, because think about it. Back in 79, I got those sponges in the yeah. Dynasty tour. They it came they came out at, out of the, the huge disco ball in the middle of the floor area at the end of the concert, uh, you know. Uh, Why yeah, can't they do yeah. another, like, an updated version of that? Maybe have it, though, go more around the stadium, uh, but... Like on the, I don't know, something, but there are a bunch of disco balls going around it, or anything, something, nets or whatever, holding something that would drop down onto the crowd at some point. I went to the U2 concert this year and they they dropped a whole bunch of stuff down. There's that you sponge. So I would think, you know, it would be a nice gesture for them to, as an appreciation to, with all the money they're making. <laughs> to to it wouldn't cost a whole lot to something, do something like you know as a token kind of thing of the show you know but that's that's the thing that bu- bugs me kind of about this is that you figure that after all this time and all the stuff that they've gotten because they, they've said it so many times like gene said you know i wouldn't have gotten to this point in my life without the yeah. fans the fans gave me all this and i'm so grateful well you know what you're not really showing you're grateful because if you're charging twelve thousand dollars for a torch and like twenty one thousand dollars for a guitar, that's not being very grateful, you know. I I honestly think that they could get away with bringing much more cheaper items on there. I'm hoping that they will bring some other, you know, more appealing items on the on the road with them than just this stuff because really this is just going to appeal to the high bracket person. That's it. What, Where do you guys see the T-shirt prices? If you guys think this is bad, <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, you know what? You know, uh, their thing is, you know, when you go on uh, like tourist kind of stuff. Say you go to the Statue of Liberty. You know, the, they're they're selling many Statue of Liberties and things like that. Why don't they sell at the at the table that when you're in the in the you know, arena? Uh, where you buy shirts and everything, a little mini stages, you know, stage of, because classic stage is a live stage kind of thing, you know, or, you know, the, the tank stage, the current stage, maybe, I don't know. I think people, oh, I think people, buy, I'd probably buy one of them, for sure. <laughs> you know, maybe the, yeah, like, I, the, I, like the did, tank. They, didn't they sell something like that before? They had these kind of like little pieces from like a live and they had like the little drum sets and stuff like that too. And you can, they have those backgrounds from uh, one of the tours on the back package. So when you open it up, you can have like the background of the stage. I, I have one of them here in my okay. studio, right? I but yeah. you, I'm sure you, I'm sure they can. But that's what I mean. Those kind of ideas, I think people would be willing to contribute and shell out for much more than a twenty-one thousand dollar guitar. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm interested in in like what the tour book's going to look like. Yeah, you know, remember remember back in on on the farewell tour that they had like um, you open it up and and not only could you go through chronologically the band and how the band progressed over the years, but it also it also had like all the tour dates behind it mm-hmm. um, um, listed. So I, I wonder if they're gonna do something in in that vein again. I hope they do because that was that's what actually one of my favorite tour books is that is that farewell tour tour. Yeah, book. You, you know what though, um, those tour books are nice and they're you know they're always so huge. But, mm-hmm. you know, I would like them to do something different maybe this time and do something a little bit, you know, smaller, smaller, but hard, hard bound it, you know, put a hard, ba- you know, hard back cover on it and have more and have more like pages kind of and put, put the history through that, um, through their career. But yeah, have the new pictures like you would in any, 
any new tour book, but it doesn't have to be like I have oh, they're not right here, but you know that I don't know the Hot in the Shade one was Hot huge. Hot in the Shade comes to mind. My so God, yeah. yeah, that and like Crazy Nights, those things were so huge. They're like I don't want to carry this around the whole show, <laughs> what kind of thing, you know. <laughs> I, and plus, I was like, dang, it's so big. I don't need it that big. I'm not going to put it on the wall. Where am I going to put this now when I get home? Um, but it is what it is. But I'd rather have like a hardback kind of thing. Like I said, maybe a little bit bigger than eight and a half by 11. You know, bigger than that, but still not overly oversized. Yeah. So, speaking of monetizing, Kiss, uh, they've released... Some some cool things that we've been clamoring for on this show for several years, which is re-releasing of some of the vinyl of the classic albums. You know, they did the Destroyer, um, Red Marble in the Spring. They did the solo albums for celebrating the 40th anniversary of solo albums. Now we have like the yellow rock and roll over that you can pre-order. All of which are very very cool. And, and you know, Mark wasn't a big fan that. They started with Destroyer, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> so, and I guess they they announced, did they announce the Rock and Roll Over, like, on the anniversary of Rock and Roll Over? I think, I think they did. I think just like they did the yeah, solo albums so on the anniversary so of the solo So what's the next, what's the next anniversary? The first album in February? That's what I think. That could be, you know, that could be a, a that's a logical choice if you'd have to celebrate the first album. Yeah. Um, well, I guess it's, it will be the 45th anniversary of the first album, too. It would be mm. logical to do something like that for, to celebrate the first album's release. I, I really hope they do that because, quite frankly, it's one of my favorite records, and I'd, I'd love to get a special edition of that. I mean, I am getting the orange rock and roll over, so yeah. I am willing to uh, shell out for an, an, another album like that. I mean, I already have, like, geez, like nine, ten copies of the first album but you know a, yeah. a colored one another, yeah another colored vinyl of that would be great you know i mean uh, of course the, the question is now that they gave orange to rock and roll over what would be the color that would they would do for this one like maybe for, silver the first album yeah yeah because you have the uh silver and black i mean and they they did them they, they seem they seem to be marbling most of it mm -hmm. at least now too. So if they marbled it, maybe they would put silver, make a silver bit with the, the black marbling kind of thing. Yeah, that would look good. Uh, or black with silver marbling, I guess. I, I don't want a red because they did do red technically. Well, first of all, they did it for Destroyer, you know, last this year. Uh, but they did it for, you know, Mark the Pie. The pie. Yeah, Pie yeah. releases way back uh, mm. early 80s. So I don't want another red of that. So. Yeah, maybe some silver, black, marble. Is that, I guess that makes the most sense for that one. But you could with silver, uh, wait a minute, silver with a black and red marble. Hmm. I don't know. But That's you know, a, you but know. You know what, what, what's interesting, though, is that when they did the solo records, they did an actual deluxe edition for where you got the slip mat and all those other things as well with it. Um, they didn't. I don't think they did. Oh, they did something like that with Rock and Roll Over. They well, did like a sticker and some other things that you can get with it. That's if you do a bundle. You can get yeah. the bundle, or you could just buy the record itself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that they would do something like that with the first record. I mean, there would there could be probably a lot of stuff in their vault that they could pull out to maybe make an interesting bundle for that. You know. Yeah, like a second one of the you know have the demos all on there too on another on another Eddie oh. Kramer demos uh, there you go like a like a gatefold one 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 of the records the actual album and then yeah, the turn, second record could be the could be the Eddie Kramer demo yeah. on one side and then maybe on the other side could be like a live show from some of the from the tour from the first tour you know you guys need to pump the brakes here you guys are getting a little <laughs> little too ahead of yourself <laughs> Yeah, because we know that they won't do they <laughs> won't do that, do that, but they'll but they'll do a twenty one thousand dollar guitar because that makes more sense, right? Correct. Now, now you're making sense. Now you're talking like a Kiss Army <laughs> member. We're not going to be doing anything cool like that and give you these Eddie Kramer demos. Things that you want, we we'll give or, you something you, you know, don't. A want. live show from the first tour that has been sitting in Gene's archives for the last forty five years. No. <laughs> 
I'm going to sell you a torch for twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> so, so we'll have to no, I, I think I think I think they should continue these these vinyl releases. While it's not new music or it's not music from their archives, it's still cool to celebrate their past with with vinyl because that's obviously how it was originally released and how. I think probably the majority of us still enjoy listening to Kiss more than anywhere, anyway else because it's how it sounds the best. So um, I'm, I'm excited for the rock and roll over. Yeah. I'm excited to see the whole – I'm excited and hopeful that they, they keep down this road and keep releasing these things. And the only way for them to keep releasing these things is for people to buy them. So if you're on the fence about getting that rock and roll over, you can get it for 35 bucks if you just buy the record itself. I mean, it's not – it's not bad at all, you know. I know you have. I know most people listening to this probably have already bought Rock and Roll over four or five or six plus times. But yeah, eleven. These are, these are the things we've been hoping for. <laughs> so you know, go out and support the band that you love and and buy these releases because they are cool. Yeah. But what else? What else? What else could they do? What else could they do that, to help promote the tour? You know, are they going to put out a greatest hits CD? I mean, I, I guess it's getting kind of late in the game. I don't know. I mean, that's that's what they've done in the past to promote a tour to put out a greatest hits CD. It's kind of getting late in the game because the tour starts in in two months, and I haven't heard any kind of rumblings of a of a greatest hits or a or a new compilation of any kind to come out to try and promote the tour. Which is that. which is odd. Which I, is very odd, if you ask me, because. I mean, even when they did the reunion tour back then, you know, they they gave us a greatest hits thing, and you they know, gave us the, one of the best, yeah. Yeah, and the, you you would figure that the record label at least would probably take advantage of this kind of a situation and put out something. It's yeah. a it's a reason to do it because it's their final final tour. I mean, they like just because it is the final tour, they should be able to put out a lot more things because there's a real reason behind it now. Like put out some of these videos that were supposed to come out, like the you know, the old, the, the Kissology 4 idea and stuff like Kissology that. Kissology 4, what's that? You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, it doesn't have to, doesn't have to be that, but <laughs> I'm just saying, put out stuff that, that they that we know is in the vault and put it out now. When are you going to do it? Like, you know, Correct. before we were saying that, you know, they weren't doing it when they were out as a touring band. Now you're going to go and retire, so might as well go put it out now because there's no point in doing that stuff when you're done, right? I mean, come on, do it now, you know? Yeah. I, I think there'll still be Kiss releases after they're done. Yeah, maybe they're maybe well, not as frequent. I mean, there's still Elvis releases. There's still Beatles releases that come out. You know, I, I just don't think they're they're going to be as frequent. But can you? I mean, Mark, you made a good point. Like when they when they toured in in '96, you know, they they put out "You Won the Best You Got the Most." When they did the spring tour in '97, the Lost Cities tour, they put out "Greatest Kiss" in in the U.S. Um, when they did the farewell tour, they had intended on putting out a live four, but that didn't happen. And, and as we found, as we heard later, there, there's there's reason why. But you know, even in even in um, in 2014, when they toured with Def Leppard, they put out that that Kiss um, 40, you know, with one song mm-hmm. off of each album. You know, they, they've these are things they've done in the past, and I think things that have you know sold pretty well in the past doing. And when they did, they did uh, the European tour. I don't know if it was sixteen or fifteen or whatever it was. They put out that Kiss World, Kiss World. CD. Mm-hmm. So these are things they've done, but I, I've heard nothing of any kind of compilation or any kind of repackaging of of a CD or anything like that. But I don't know who sells CDs anymore besides Amazon. You can't even buy CDs at Best Buy. So yeah, I, I, I so I don't know. I wouldn't imagine that that Kiss World CD sold that many. No, um, I didn't even buy it. <laughs> I didn't even buy it. That's saying something. If I remember this show, didn't even buy. It. <laughs> it's like I, I'm, I'm getting tired of that kind of, you know, uh, rehashing of different greatest hits packages. Uh, it's just getting old. So, I mean, uh, geez, put something else out, like a, some kind of anniversary, even though it's not a right anniversary. You know, I, I'm gonna kiss alive kind of thing out or something um, yeah I don't know. so who knows so 
those are our thoughts. Anything else, guys? Those are kind of our thoughts today on the on the topics we had. Anything else from the board you guys want to talk about? Let's see. Anything else going on in the Kiss yeah. world that that needs to be discussed? <laughs> needs our well, you know that that, that that Kiss or that Paul Stanley live thing happened today. Yeah. Um, though I caught it too late to hear all the questions, so. I think they're your your standard kind of vanilla kind of stuff. Yeah, I can't imagine them asking any I hard thought. questions. It, you know, who, who's your favorite painter was one of the questions. I'm like, really, the, these are the hard hitting questions, yeah, and, and that's exactly what he said. Is that what he said? It is. I just guess. I, I, yeah. He did. You know. It's oh, what, what's it like? What's it been like working with Gene for the last forty plus years? Oh, that's real original. Um, what do you miss about living in New York? And it's like, yeah, you know, that that that's not what you know, the older. I don't know, just just very vanilla softball wish, questions. Yeah, I wish they wouldn't have left New York. I mean, I think had they stayed planted in there, I think we would have had a different sound. Uh, and you know, through the through the eighties, when they went you know, that's, Hollywood, that's a very it, it changes. It changes your attitude. That's, that's an interesting point, though, because I've, I've always said that there's certain Kiss records that they put out that has a very New York vibe to it. Like Dynasty, I've always thought was a very New Yorkish kind of record. Now, it goes it, record could plan. you imagine what it would have been like if they would have stayed in, mm -hmm. all, in New York throughout all of it? I mean, I think a lot of those records wouldn't have been so syrupy, like Crazy Nights or stuff like that. I mean, maybe a little bit more hard hitting than uh, than they were. If they had that New York attitude with it, you know. Yeah, I think that 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 it's did something to them, you know, when they when they came from New York to uh, you know California. I always I think about that every now and then. What what would have happened, or how their music would have uh, been had they stayed, or even the quality of the songs or the the subject matter um, that they wrote about. Yeah. Well, I'm and I'm gonna ask this just only because I didn't catch too much of last week's episode. But did anybody actually mention or talk about the whole Vinnie Vincent thing? I think you guys did. I listened to it over the weekend. Obviously, Robert Fleischman is out, and Vinnie's in search for a new lead singer for these shows that are supposed to take place in Nashville in February. Yeah, they um, did. They did show the venue, the supposed venue. Yeah, I saw that yesterday. Which is supposed to be some kind of youth, is it a youth center or or something like that. It's just a real <laughs> small little, uh, I don't know, yeah. hole in the wall thing. And it has. Yeah, I think they've people saying, size. There's no bar, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, it's just like rinky dink kind of thing. Um, and the amount of tickets I think available are not that many, right? Um, from what I thought I saw. Yeah, it's it's a much smaller it's venue than, than what they were shooting for in Memphis. Oh, so, you know, totally different than yeah, the Memphis. Yeah, thing. but that that's the interesting thing about this because I don't know if you guys caught that interview that Eddie Trunk did with Carmine Apiece. Um, he's supposedly drumming now with Vinnie Vincent, him and uh, Tony Franklin, the the rhythm section of Blue Murder are going to be now his backing band. And Carmine even said on the interview that he doesn't know really what the heck is going on with this. He said that he had, did have an initial conversation with Vinnie Vincent about this and that, you know, they had an, an agreement and they were talking about, you know, all these ideas like that they that he did some recording with Vinnie back in the days, like in the 70s uh, with him. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, I caught that. Yeah, and that he said that they might even press some vinyl of those songs and sell them at the show. But sure. yeah. after after this initial conversation, he's he said that he doesn't really know what's going on because Eddie kept asking him. He goes, "Well, what's going on? Do you know any more details?" And he goes, "Well, I don't really know much beyond that, you know." So I'm I'm a little concerned about the whole thing, yeah. you know, because if this is being totally ground downgraded to what you guys said it is to some kind of you know youth club or something, uh, I don't know. If Carmine and these guys are going to want to be participating in something like that, you know. And, yeah, and, and, and I, I think know. Kiss fan, I think Kiss fans or many fans just have their reservations, and that's why they've mm. they've downgraded it. And I, th I think a lot of people are in are in the same boat as Julian, where you know what, 
I'm just going to take my refund. I'm just not going to do it. And this and the shows as they were weren't selling great to begin with. Mm-hmm. So it, it's making it even even a bigger struggle than it was before. Yeah, all the people that did have reservations for the <laughs> the Memphis one had to cancel yeah. their reservations, and they you know lost money. Lost money and say, oh, do I do I want to hitch my wagon to this? Again and gamble, possibly lose money again. I mean, uh, fool me once, you know, fool me twice. Uh, I, I don't, so, yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but I wouldn't risk. I wouldn't risk going there. I'm glad that I went to Atlanta in January and that I'm, <laughs> and that I don't. I'm not in the. I'm not in the situation right now. Thinking, oh, geez, I have to meet him because right. This time might be running out on this comeback, and I'm 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 glad that I'm not having to play that card right now. That I that I did it. I met him. I don't need to meet him again. This this comeback is is not well orchestrated. It's 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 just like all over the place, and there's a lot of a lot of just mess ups going on. You know, I I, I just don't understand it. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. I wish him the best. I, I I wish him nothing but success in this, and I and I hope that that everything does go go well for him. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't wish him any ill will yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. I I think he's he's a very talented, very talented musician, and I and I wish him nothing but the best in in the, with these shows. And I'm I'm looking forward to hearing what people have to say afterwards. So, yeah. but it's just been a little bit of a, a rocky road, obviously. Hmm. One last thing I got, it's kind of caught my interest on the board this week, is getting getting teased for being a KISS fan. And I think that's something that every KISS fan had, has experienced at one time or another in their life. You know, KISS was never cool for me growing up. As a kid in the 80s, I remember being a kid in the 80s and people telling me KISS was old then. So... And you know they're old. Listen to you know Poison or, or or whatever people my age were listening to at the time. And you know, but I I always wore my my backpack to high school with with my Kiss patch sewn on the back, and I I didn't care, mm-hmm. you know. And and you know maybe it was self you know it was self inflicted that you know like well you know maybe maybe if you take the backpack maybe you take the Kiss patch off your backpack. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe they won't give you a hard time about it. And, you know, maybe, you know, I went to a, a, a Catholic boys high school and, you know, and maybe, maybe when it's, you know, you don't have to wear, you know, khaki pants and a collared shirt and they let you dress down. Maybe you don't wear the kiss shirt so that, you know, <laughs> some people don't give you such a hard time every, every time. <laughs> but, but I was proud of, of who I was and I was proud of being a kiss fan. And most kiss fans are proud of being kiss fans. They're proud of their band. And I'm sure you guys and people listening to this show have heard things like that before that, you know, I got, I got made fun of cause I was a kiss fan or I got in a fight because my, my, the kid up the street is a couple years older than me, hates kiss and whatever, you know, have you got, did you guys ever experience anything like that or, or, or even to this day, do you guys, you know, somebody, you know, give you a, give you trouble every once in a while for your, your kiss fandom. Well, back in the day, um, didn't get too much uh, hassled about it. I mean, the worst that I ever experienced was when, you know, because I also went to a Catholic high school that wore uniforms, right? It wasn't an old boy one of us, you know, guy and girl, obviously. Uh, but when we, whenever we had our dress down days, we could wear whenever we wanted. Right. You know, we had our Kiss shirts and our Rush shirts and stuff like that. And, um, you know, the Kiss the kiss shirts did get the comments right and, and back at when when i was going to school they were all it was always more like you know oh they're still around kind of thing you know <laughs> because at that point it was like when i was in high school it was like 87 88 and stuff like that right so there was just around like crazy nights and stuff like that right um but i, I did re- i did notice though that once they started doing stuff like revenge and stuff like that even though it wasn't like a huge seller because they had videos like Unholy on TV, the attitude kind of changed a bit where it wasn't so uncool mm-hmm. to like Kiss at that point. You know what I mean? Because that kind of really helped Kiss, I think, the whole MTV thing. Because, you know, 
what a similarity that I noticed was when I was starting high school that we had those comments where I was like, oh, they're still around. And now in like years now, when I meet up with, you know, family members and stuff like that during the holidays, and if they see me, you know, talking about Kiss or wearing a Kiss shirt, I, I've heard a few comments from people even now saying, oh, they're still they're still around because really Kiss doesn't have that same sort of impact that they did back then. They're not on television. There's no ads for this tour at all on TV promoting it, you know, so Joe Average probably doesn't even know that Kiss is in existence until they see some sort of a flyer somewhere or something, you know, somewhere people are talking about it or saying that there's tickets on sale, right? So uh, it's an interesting parallel. I'm, I'm curious about you guys. Like, how, what about you, Ken? Did anything like that happen with you? No, I mean, uh, I'm about 10 years earlier than you, you know, the high school and and stuff. And uh, I remember I got getting into Kiss. My friends liked them too, which was interesting back then. Um, yeah, they, they, they liked them. We, we'd all listen to them. We all went to that. I remember the Dynasty concert even. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I knew after Disco, kind of after Dynasty, um, I still wore my Kiss t-shirt and stuff, but no one gave me a bad time. Uh, I don't remember any, anybody giving me a bad time about or, or mostly it was like, uh, it, they were like, uh, someone would say, they didn't know me, like, you know, I was surprised that I like Kiss. It's like, you don't seem like a Kiss kind of <laughs> person. I was like, what's a Kiss person supposed to be? You used to get that like, lot. you know, I was yeah. supposed to be like a, uh, you know, have a leather jacket and, and spikes on my. You don't wear the makeup, and, man. And, and, and tattoos and a mohawk or whatever. Uh, I, was, I was like, no, it's, you know, I'm a big Kiss fan. And, you know, and, that's what I like. I've been a Kiss fan since you know, whatever I say seventy seven. So people do that, and then in the eighties, yeah, some people like yeah, like Mark said, you know, I wear some Kiss t shirt. Maybe it was a one without makeup, like a lick it up t shirt or something. And it's like they're still around, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, you get that comment. They're still around. They don't know that they're still around. Mm -hmm. um, I think everyone knew they were around when, when the reunion happened because that was so huge that year. Everyone knew. Everyone knew. And then the, the attitudes changed quite a bit when that happened. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I've talked on the show before that I was, I was a, a fan growing up and you know, Revenge came out. It, it really sparked my fandom. And when they put on the makeup in 96. It put back on the makeup, I guess it was a second semester of my junior year in 96 when they announced the tour in April and then came back to my senior year in high school, 96 going into 97. You know, I was I was damn proud of them then that, you know, screw you guys. You guys gave me trouble for the last three years. Well, you know what? Screw you guys. <laughs> you know, they're the biggest band. They're the biggest band in the country now. You know, half of half of you went to go see him over the summer after you gave me hell about him for, for three years with non makeup, saying they're old and they're washed up. Why do you even like that band? So um, it was kind of like my my victory lap senior year in high school after they made it to the top after I was given <laughs> hell for three years about him. So yeah. like, kind of like a middle finger in your face the last year of high school. So those are our thoughts on current events with KISS, end of the road, 25 more dates, 103 overall for 2019, mm. with obviously more to come. There are no Japanese dates yet. There are no South American dates yet. So obviously this tour will go into 2020. I don't see them announcing more dates for 2019. I'd be really shocked at this point if they snuck in a Japanese leg or a South American leg of the tour in 2019. But there's there's some gaps in there and we may be surprised yet so yeah. yeah but i don't see it but at the same in the same vein like we said i don't see it going much past i don't see it going into 2021 but we may be surprised as well and maybe get maybe not a full three years but maybe into 2021 the final shows being in in early 2021 so did you buy kiss tickets have you bought kiss tickets for the end of the road how did you feel buying them other than 
having to sleep on the couch or an empty wallet. And <laughs> how, do, how do you feel about Kiss monetizing some of these things that they're, that they're monetizing out on the road between the, the torches, the microphones, the guitars, and the strap for the guitars? What else do you think Kiss might try to monetize um, and try to, try to get Kiss fans for one last time as they tour around the world? What are your thoughts on the color vinyl? And did you get teased for being a Kiss fan? Those are our thoughts this week. We may have through a show without Julian. If you've made it this far into the show, thank you for sticking around and listening to the whole show. And we look forward to seeing you again next time. So for Mark, and for Ken, for Julian, I am Lonnie STL Kiss on the board. Thank you for listening to the Kiss FAQ podcast. You stay classy, Kiss Army. Thank you for spending time listening to the Kiss FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the Kiss FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.